So we are now in the Philippines for a few weeks and we've been traveling about. And if you don't know who we are, we've been living in Thailand for the last four, three and, three and a half, years. four years. So we decided to make a living in Thailand versus the Philippines comparison video from what we've seen so far. So first of all, we're going to start with our first impressions from arriving in Manila. Initially, I thought it had a very similar feel to Myanmar and a slight Indian feel as well, just because of the busyness and the look on the street. Some of the poverty is slightly more visible in Manila, but another major thing that we noticed when we first came in is the amount of English that's spoken here. Pretty much all the signs on the shops are written in English, which was a bit of a shock to us because in Thailand, everywhere is majority Thai. It is a lot more polluted here, more so than in Thailand, definitely. And I think that comes from there are a lot of diesel cars here. Yeah, diesel is definitely the fuel of choice in the Philippines. It seems to be the cheapest fuel to get here. Another one of the first things that you'll notice is that they have a special type of vehicle here called a jeepney. If you've lived in Thailand, it's very similar to a Songtao. It's like a truck that's been converted from Jeeps from the World War II. So yeah, that's how they started that's off. That's how they started off. You'll see a lot of them driving around. They all look like Jeeps at the front, long extended back, jump on, jump off system. We've been told it's an eight peso fee within the city to go anywhere within their route. And another thing, it seems quite easy to work out where they're going because on the side of the jeepney it will have its destination, which yeah. is something that you don't get in Thailand. You often don't know where the songtails are going unless yeah. you ask the driver and then they may not speak English. A lot of the people here speak English and the signs are written on the jeepney, so yeah. you can it's just see to work out where you're what going. Jeepney you need to get on. <laughs> yeah. We haven't taken any buses or any public transport since we've been here, but it's difficult to get to some of the lesser known areas by public transport. Uh, you would have to rent a private car or hire a driver to get to certain areas, but bigger cities and bigger destinations you can get to and from places for around 200 to 300 pesos on a bus. So it seems quite cheap still. On an air conditioned bus, yeah. like a coach type thing, not a local No, not a local, local bus, bus, which would probably be a lot cheaper, but I don't know yeah. about that. We've done quite a bit of driving around with a private driver and we've been noticing that the road conditions are kind of the same. Yeah, very similar. If you know us, you know that we always drive our own car in Thailand, so we've experienced quite a lot of driving and we know what it's like to be on the roads out there. Some potholes here and there, some road works around, but to be honest, not that bad and not that good. One major difference between the Philippines and Thailand is that people drive on the right-hand side of the road here in the Philippines and it's the left on, in Thailand, so. So Americans will find it much easier to adapt yeah. driving out here. <laughs> I have noticed that the drivers honk their horns a lot more here. They don't honk their horns pretty much at all no. in Thailand, but it's not an aggressive horn honking. It's more of an awareness yeah, thing. More like, I'm coming through, be careful. Yeah. And it's nowhere near as bad as India standard yeah. of horn honking. Yeah, of course not, definitely. <laughs> they go all out with their horns. Yeah. I, don't, I don't think that driving is very difficult here. I think I could get used to it quite simply quite easily. I have also noticed there are a lot less motorbikes here and in Thailand you see whole families on one scooter and everyone seems to own one. You still see the odd family on a bike but it's just definitely not as much as you see in Thailand. Cars are the vehicle of choice here. Yeah. One thing I always like to look up when I go to another country is fuel prices because we like to drive and the fuel prices are around about the same as Thailand about 40 pesos for petrol, 20 pesos for LPG, and 25 pesos for diesel, so less than 50p going down the scale from there. So it's very cheap to get fuel, there same are, as Thailand, there I think. Are also, a lot less LPG cars here, though, so the LPG stations are few and far between. Yeah. yeah. I did a bit of searching online about buying cars, and I found that you can pretty much buy a second-hand vehicle from around £500 upwards. You can get very expensive cars and very cheap ones. Yeah, we saw an old Jeep with no windows, that kind of style vehicle, and it was 40,000 pesos. Yeah, which is about £600. And just on the internet earlier, I found a 1986 Ford Escort Mark II, which is <laughs> kind of similar to what we drive in Thailand for about 100,000 pesos, yeah. which is about 1,400 pounds, which is exactly what we paid for our Mark I Escort in Thailand. So yeah, I'd say it's about the same for a second-hand car. Renting cars in the Philippines, however, is much more expensive yeah, than Thailand. Quite 
surprising. Yeah, a bit of a shock. We've been using a private driver organised by your dad's family and he charges us 3,500 pesos for a big van that can accommodate up to eight people, I think, or maybe a little bit more. And the cost of him and the driver was 3,500 pesos per day. I looked up how much it costs to rent a car yourself and it's about 4,500 pesos for a, a very small economy small car, car, just for four people, like yeah. a Kia Picanto style. In Thailand, you can rent a car for a 800 baht to 1,000 baht. Yeah, no, about that, about 800 to 1,500 yeah. baht per day. It's actually cheaper to fly around the country yeah. than it is to drive with a rented vehicle. Whoa, what on earth? It's <laughs> <laughs> massive. He's upgraded his knees. <laughs> <laughs> if you want to get around the Philippines and cover major distances, you're better off flying and then getting public transport when you're there, I think, yeah. or buying your own car. Yeah. The spoken language here is called Tagalog. Had we come to the Philippines straight from England, from the West, it would have been a lot easier for us to adapt initially because of the language. There's no language barrier here, really. Well, it's a lot smaller than yeah. it is in Thailand, so yeah. yeah. Every, pretty much everybody that we've encountered, be it in restaurants, hotels, on the streets. It's they, local bars. Yeah, they all speak English and it just feels a lot easier. Saying that though, there seems to be a lot less Westerners yeah. here than we find in Thailand. Like, you know, you get a lot of interracial couples in Thailand. Here, I don't see many. I thought that there would be a lot more and we've been to two major cities and one major tourist destination yeah. and barely seen any in comparison to what we're used to seeing in Thailand. So, I don't know. I'm not sure why that is. And I mean, it is low season now in the Philippines, but even in Thailand, in low season, there are tourists mm. or Westerners and foreigners walking around. One thing that I really like, especially because we like to go and take pictures of stuff, is that people don't bother you on the streets. I was told that kids would be mobbing us and that everyone would be trying to get us to buy things and although stuff like that does happen it has happened hardly at all even in some really really local areas we haven't been approached really by anybody and that I was surprised by and pleased by because I don't like it when kids are pulling on your clothes like they do in India yeah. I was expecting that and it didn't happen yeah. so that's really good and all the people that we have met and come in contact with are extremely friendly mm. but it seems very genuine like yeah. they don't try and sell you something afterwards it's just pure yeah. you know politeness and people say hello to you on the street as well we went for a bike ride this morning and people were waving and say good morning and mm. it's nice yeah. makes you feel at yeah. home yeah. yeah as you may know we enjoy going out for a meal every now and again and yes. we enjoy our food and coffees and we've Notice that the price of food here in the Philippines is generally on par, if not the same, as Thailand. Mm, almost exactly the same, yeah, I would say. The kind of restaurants that we've been going to. You could feed yourself for three dollars a day, or you could feed yourself for hundreds of dollars a day. You've got yeah. the options, but the mid-range places that we go to have matched up to our Thailand prices and expectations. And the Filipino food is also a lot less spicy than Thai food. So mm. if you're not used to your chilies and your exotic flavors, Filipino food isn't really spicy. No. It's, it's more garlicky. Garlicky, vinegary, but yeah. tasty. Sometimes a little bit sweet, but never spicy, yeah. unless you ask for it. Yeah. Now, we're going to talk about coffee. Coffee is a, a very mm. touchy subject for us <laughs> because we love coffee, and Thailand has amazing, amazing beans. It does. So, when we came here, we had to try out the coffees. And I would say, so far, you can get very good coffees here, but not as often. Yeah. So, if you're a coffee connoisseur, um, you'll struggle to find the best stuff. Yeah. But if you just generally like coffee, you'll be, you'll be pleased. And the prices are the same as well, roughly. Uh, yesterday we had a cappuccino that was 89 pesos. Mm. So that's about one pound 10. One pound 10. And I think a big thing is that it's the same as Thailand, but there's no fresh milk here in the Philippines. It's all UHT, yeah. ultra heat treated milk. But for some reason, the milk that we get it in Thailand is lighter. Too. Yeah. yeah, the milk that you get here and in Malaysia as well is much heavier and much creamier. Yeah, I think it tastes similar to England milk here, it, what we're British used to milk. in Britain. But, but it isn't fresh. No, it's not fresh. You can't drink the tap water in the Philippines, so don't try. Um, sometimes they have different tanks in a house, one with salty water and one with fresh water, but you still can't drink it. The locals use a filtered water system 
that they buy in yeah, pretty much like Thailand buy it and they deliver it to your house or wherever but there aren't any reverse osmosis system machines that we use in Thailand where yeah. you can fill up your water bottles on the street they don't have that here so you either have to have it delivered or buy bottled water yeah when it comes to bakeries the Philippines smashes it it's <laughs> the, the the baked goods here are much better and the quality and standard of the uh, pastries and everything. Yeah, just seen some very good breads. Yeah, breads very good croissants. are much better here. Now, you, you do get really good pastries and bakeries in Thailand, but they're yeah. much rarer than here. Yeah, and they have a very nice traditional Filipino bread roll called a pandasal. Which I love. Which Jay loved. He did say the other day, I don't feel like I've eaten enough pandasal this since is true. I've been here. I so. did say that. Filipino bakeries are better, yeah. I think. You do get a lot of street dogs here as well, same as Thailand, but I think they're less looked after. They look a bit more skinny. Skinny, scrawny. Yeah. They don't get fed. Don't they don't get fed. Like in Thailand, you see dogs on the street and you're like, Is it a street is dog? Is it a street dog or someone's pet because they look quite muscly or a bit mm. fat? Or, <laughs> or they've got a collar on. Yeah, but, but here, here they, most of the time, they're just kind of chained up to a shop to be used as a barking dog. Yeah, and I don't think they're. They're not as looked after, so. But they're also, from what we've experienced walking about in the streets, they're not aggressive either. No. So don't be afraid to walk past them. Yeah, they've just left us all alone. Yeah. But yeah, there are a lot of dogs here, and there are a lot of cats. There's more cats here than yeah, Thailand. Yeah, more cats. <laughs> Shopping malls are a big thing in Thailand. Here, less so. You do have big shopping malls in pretty much every city, but they are smaller and not as comprehensive as the ones that you get in Thailand, but still very good. You can yeah. still get some really good stuff there. Yeah. One thing we've noticed when we've been out shopping, even in the shopping malls, is they don't really give you plastic bags. They, they give you paper bags, which is really good. Obviously, it's good for the environment. In Thailand, they give you plastic bag for everything. Like an American grocery store, I think. Yeah. yeah. So that was interesting for us. Yeah. Another thing that might seem a bit funny from two people from England is that it's really interesting to see churches out here because when you live in Asia for almost four years and you're just surrounded by Buddhist temples, to see churches in an Asian country is really cool and I've enjoyed visiting mm -hmm. monasteries and chapels yeah. and stuff. And it's a big Christian country so it's not just one religion that's represented, there's right. all different kinds of Christianity here. Methodist, so Church, Jehovah's seen. Witnesses. No temples. No temples. So Christmas is big here. <laughs> yes, Christmas is big. They're already playing Christmas songs and it is October. So <laughs> Just like England. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the weather in the Philippines is very similar to Thailand. It is right now very hot and humid. It's the low season and the rainy season, but it is rather hot. It's about 32 degrees today. It's the same three seasons. You have rainy, dry and hot, and cool and sunny. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. The high season is the cool and sunny one, which runs over Christmas time. That's when most of the people come here. Yeah. One thing I notice that is very different from Thailand as well is that there are armed guards and armed security guys everywhere. Around a lot more yeah. than in Thailand. We see a few in Thailand at you know banks and major places mm, but, here, but here you will have them you, outside a KFC yeah, with a huge a, machine gun and they're in the shopping malls they're in a outside the places where you get people with money I guess you see people with big guns yeah. so that um, was a bit of a we've been here two weeks and I've probably seen about six armoured vans proper full-on armoured trucks and stuff mm. I've seen quite a lot of but yeah you don't get that so much in Thailand so I'm not sure what to think about that and what it means, but it can feel a little bit intimidating in places. Another factor that's rather different from Thailand is the hotel's costs and standards. The price of a decent hotel here is more than what we have ever paid in Thailand mm. for a similar standard of hotel. You can still get like backpacker places and they call them transient houses transient or houses, bed yeah. spaces, <laughs> which sounds funny, but um, you can still get cheap accommodation here, so don't worry about that. Yeah. But if you were looking at the mid-range buildings that we and hotels that we normally go to, you'd end up paying probably an extra 10 or 20 pounds a night than what you would pay in Thailand yeah. for a similar standard or less. So kind of like Myanmar, um, yeah, you pay more to, for less. Similar to Myanmar, definitely. One of the major, major things that has made me realise that the Philippines is different is there's no dual pricing system for foreigners here. In Thailand, you pay 10 times, sometimes more than 10 times the amount that a Thai local will pay to get into attractions and tourist places. Here, it's exactly the same price for everybody. And I have to say that feels very nice yeah. because after having 
that happened for several years in Thailand, it starts to grate on you because you feel like you want to fit in and then that happens, it's not nice. But here, it's the same price. And the, the places that we have been to that are you know, maybe a viewpoint or we went to a monastery the other day with a very nice garden and grounds that you could walk around in and the price of getting in is very low. It was mm. 30 pesos for one, 50 pesos for another. We've never paid any more than 50 pesos to get for into an attraction. Entry. So it is a lot less here and it is very nice that it's just one price, no matter where you're from. So the reason that we are in the Philippines, maybe we should have started off with this, <laughs> but my dad is here and we are actually sitting in my dad's house right now. So that's why we're here on a little holiday to see my dad. And he's actually in the bedroom right now awaiting his Cute. debut. Yeah. <laughs> I have got some questions for him that I thought it would be nice to get him involved in this video as well about his experience in the Philippines as an older Western Expat. man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll go and get him. Ready for your questions? I am indeed ready okay. for my questions. <laughs> First of all, what do you like about the Philippines? You can be yourself and do pretty much what you want and I like the people, very friendly, very welcoming very hospitable. Would you live here permanently? I could see myself living here permanently when I retire in a few years time. That was my next question. Do you plan to retire out here? I think seeds of retirement ideas are at the back of my mind and it's a big strong, it's a strong possibility. Yeah. Are there any bad points about being in the Philippines? Bad points about the Philippines, traffic, driving, Nobody stops for you at pedestrian crossings. It's the same as Thailand. <laughs> yeah. Maybe there's a little undercurrent of not always knowing what's going on being a foreigner in another country, so you're not quite sure. Everything looks good on the surface, but you're never sure what's hidden underneath. Sometimes mm. it's too hot. All right, you said a few already, but what are the good points? There's some really nice areas of the Philippines with beautiful climate. Obviously the people, probably the happiest and most friendly people in the world. <laughs> forget what they say about Thailand. Philippines has got the happiest people. On the whole, very kind of shy, but very welcoming once you get to know them. Right. Have you got any advice for anyone else that is looking at retiring to the Philippines or coming here on a longer term basis? Well, I would suggest you come here first for a holiday and have a tour around and check out the place. Don't just go to the obvious places. You need to take the Philippines for what it is and don't try and change it. You've got to come with an open mind. The people are different, everybody behaves differently, but you know, if you accept it, you find it a great place to be. The other day I heard a story that you had an experience of visiting a hospital in the Philippines. How was it? A small accident, nothing to worry about, but <laughs> required having my head checked. I found it to be okay, no issues. The hospital was clean, the staff were well trained and knew what they were doing, and I was looked after really well. You need to have health insurance here, so you have to pay for everything. And in case anyone is wondering, Dad got a drill in his head. <laughs> so, that happened. <laughs> yeah, it was our accident. Leading on to the next question, what's been your worst experience here? I can have to be honest and say some of my eating experiences <laughs> outside haven't been great. At home you can cook and prepare food the way you want it. You need to be careful where you eat, <laughs> that's all. You do have a rather sensitive tummy though, don't you? But I'm not the only person with a sensitive tummy, <laughs> so you know, anyone else coming here who's uh, not got a strong constitution, just think about what you're eating and be very careful about what you choose from the menu and, and play safe. Okay, this is working out well because my next question is, do you like the Filipino food? Uh, personally, <laughs> not a fan, but there's plenty of options and you can always get some more basic foods if you don't want to go down the route of exotic Filipino dishes. Dad doesn't like garlic as well, so Filipino food is quite garlic heavy, isn't it? But there's plenty of options without garlic. One of the good things about the Philippines is English is widely spoken and understood. Yeah. So you can always ask for things and it's not normally an issue. Can you get your home comforts here and your Western products and things like that, or do you find you have to bring them with you from England? I think like any country outside of the UK, you can't get everything. There are shops here where you pay a membership, like a warehouse club, where you can get imported food and products and wine. Okay. So it's available in Manila area. I mean, I think you can live here quite happily without struggling too much. Okay. There's good cable TV if you like watching the TV, so you can get Western channels and films and movies. Good beer. <laughs> and uh, most food products are available in one form or another, so okay. I don't think you'd go without. 
And finally, you have been to Thailand and the Philippines. What would you say was the main difference between them? I think the main difference is Thailand is far better known, far better publicised and marketed on a worldwide basis. So the Philippines is still very much an unknown quantity. Thailand is where the Philippines should be aiming to be with regards infrastructure, road networks, signage on the roads. The Philippines needs to step up a level <laughs> if it wants to be taken as a serious tourist destination other than for the intrepid backpackers who've discovered it and are finding some of the best beaches, best surfing and by all accounts best scuba diving in the world. It's mm. all here. That's it. You're, you're done, Dad. You're dismissed. Thank you. Walang and a man, Sasha. <laughs> and what does that mean? That means you're welcome. Uh, you're learning the language. Absolutely. Well done. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'm back. <laughs> and we just wanted to say, like, in a kind of overall summary, um, the recurring advice that we kept getting from people was always about safety. Is the Philippines safe to travel in? Rob and Luz were both telling us to put our cameras away and be careful and be safe. And to be honest with you, the only time I felt unsafe in the Philippines was when they told me to feel unsafe. Yeah, same for me. I personally didn't feel unsafe at any time either. Um, I didn't feel like I got stared at or anything like that, which again I was told I would. I didn't really feel it was any different to Thailand. I didn't feel any, un any more unsafe there than I do here. And obviously you have to be cautious. Even in the poor areas, nobody bothered us. And when we finally did go out on our own and just braved it and walked out into the streets, we felt absolutely fine and... We didn't really do that much different from what we would do in Thailand, really, did we? No. So I would say, take everything with a pinch of salt. Obviously there's dangers everywhere in the world, but yeah. we didn't personally feel that the Philippines was that dangerous in any way and we didn't feel that the people made us feel uneasy, uneasy no. in any way. No. We would definitely go back and travel the same way that we do in Thailand. Um, we have lived in Thailand for almost four years and we've only been visiting the Philippines for just about two weeks so perhaps yeah. some of our observations are slightly rose tinted perhaps but... Um, but they are exactly that, they're our observations and things that we've seen and noticed and thought were worthwhile mentioning in our short time here. We do know a lot more about Thailand than the Philippines and maybe if we spent longer here we would then scratch the surface yeah. and find more things and also why I thought it would be good to get my dad involved because he spent a lot more time here obviously than we have so we heard from him as well the Philippines feels a bit like Thailand Mark II if more people knew about it it would be just as good well yeah. that's for the future to tell <laughs> we've really enjoyed our time here yeah, really and like I would it. definitely come back and spend more time here yeah too. if you enjoyed this video and want to see more of what we observed here in the Philippines we've actually been making a daily vlog of our entire 10 to 12 day trip here and you can see all the bits and pieces we've been quite honest and we filmed everything yeah so check out our daily Philippines vlogs I'll put a link here for you to do that hope you found it useful yeah and check out the rest of our videos <laughs> And we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye. Eat and listen. Do these kind of things. Where to start? Oh god, I don't know where to start. Oh no. Where's his hat? He's upgraded, he's got another leaf. He's carrying a leaf. That flies back. And don't get brave. Ooh, ooh. Mm -hmm. Whoa.